What's well, good y'all, Nick Derrick here, and in this video, I want to be showing you guys the biggest issue I see from lower rank main tanks in like a standard game. So I'm really focusing on like Arissa and Ryan, not so much Winston or like any maps that revolve around dive. Uh, one quick note, this doesn't really pertain to Bastion comps, because that's kind of a whole other story. So if you want to see me make a video on that, I'd love to make one, just let me know in the comment section below. If you want to see more of me, check out my Twitch and join my Discord. I'll leave links to both in the description below. Let's get right into the video. Alright, so the whole point of this video is to kind of show you guys like the biggest mistake that main tanks are making on both offense and defense. It's kind of two whole separate points, so the video might be a little longer, I'm not sure. But on defense, the biggest issue for main tanks is they'll hear play the choke, play the choke, and what that means for them is literally to play in the choke. And this is the, the totally wrong idea. So what play the choke means to me is that when you could test the enemy's progress, you want to have them in the choke. So for example, when you're contesting enemy Reinhardt, you want to have him stuck around this area so his team's not able to move through and can't take shots without getting to like into super aggressive angles. So generally on defense, you're not going to want to play up here. Reason being, if you're playing like this, everyone on their side of the side, excuse me, everyone on their side of the choke is able to shoot you, while people on your team have to be in basically this exact spot to shoot their, their team. So it's kind of, kind of counterintuitive, honestly. When you hear play the choke and you play inside of it. So what you want to do is kind of back up here. You see your team that's all behind you and has like LOS from all the way back there can shoot the people that are in the choke. And the people that are behind for the enemy team, like say backline, like maybe they have a Zen, Lucio, Ana, they can't contribute to the fight, maybe like with shield break or anything. So generally you want to test the enemy when they're in the choke, not when you're in choke. So back it up a little bit. Now I'm going to go through. I'm not going to say every map, but I'm, I'm going to go through most of the maps that um, Ryan and Zarya are generally used on instead of instead of dive maps. <clears throat> Excuse me. Most maps in the game can either be broken down into a... We'll call it GOATS versus dive, okay? When I say GOATS, I don't mean GOATS. I mean general comps where you have two tanks and we'll say a hit scan, Something that plays in the back line. Not even a hit scan. So you get like a Junkrat, a Mei, something like that, you know? So a comp where you have two tanks and a backline DPS. We'll say that. Maps like Watchpoint Gibraltar and Nubani First Point are definitely dive maps, so I'm not going to go over those. But something like this, Dorado, Eichenwald, those are Ryan Zarya slash Ghost maps, so I'm going to go over those. Okay, so real quick before we move on, um, I think I could maybe give a better indicator on this program called Stats Banana. Stat Banana Maps, excuse me. I think it was around $5 to pay for this program, so if you're interested in like coaching or just showing visual diagrams, this, this app might be very helpful for you. So I want to show... Um, you know, the dangerous position you're forcing your DPS to get into if you're playing tank in like it's such a close angle. So let's say you're here and your shield shields like that, okay? Enemy team will just say is Ryan, we'll say Hanzo, Junkrat, whatever. Okay. Anything that's coming from spawn is able to pressure your shield. You know, we'll just say the green represents enemy fire, kind of a poor color choice, but it's okay. So by you being all the way up here, anything from the enemy, you know, we'll just say fucking Torv up here, he can shoot shield, anything from back there, you're shooting your shield. Now, if you play a little back, a little over here, enemies forced to move into this position. Their enemies forced to move here. So everything in this yellow area back here, everything back here, can't shoot your shield now because you moved all the way back. They're forced to move into the choke, which is this tight area right there, of that yellow line. That's where you want the enemies. So let's say you had a so you had a Hanzo on your team and you were playing up close. If you're playing in the choke, your Hanzo is not gonna be able to do any, anything to the enemy shield from all the way back here. Let me clear the surface. Okay, so if the Ryan shield is this yellow line, yeah, let's say move him back a little bit. Okay. If this is the Ryan shield, your Hanzo really can't do much to the enemy Ryan shield from a from a very safe spot. So he's kind of forced to either get too close, which is not Hanzo's effective range. So you're forcing your DPS into really bad positions just to shield break. Now, again, you back up. You're forcing enemy DPS into a bad spot because they're stuck in the choke. They don't have many movement options available. So keep that in mind. Now, if you're playing maybe a little more back, the enemy's stuck to either go through this narrow passage, thrown by this line. The this narrow passage over here, You're stuck there, or through these super tight passages, which is unrecommended. You know, 
So they go through here, 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 or here. Generally, the four areas you can push through. Well, three actually, because hotel counts as one. Uh, putting them in these tight, narrow chokes allows your DPS to get much easier shots. So as Brian, I recommend playing all the way back here. Excuse that voice crack. We're going to play in here, keeping your shield here. This way, the enemy DPS are forced to move in. Or if you want to contest at the choke, feel free to move a little closer so Ryan doesn't, their enemy Ryan doesn't take this space. Because you play back here, Ryan's allowed to take all that space, but if you play a little closer, Ryan is not allowed to get that space, and their DPS are stuck in the choke. Now let's go on to another map. Alright, so here we'll take a look at Eichenwald. So as you can see, this is point A, this is where the attackers want to get to. So say you're Ryan on offense, and you're pushing all the way up here, we'll just say Pretend this is below the bridge because you can't really layer it too well. Nice. Okay, let's just say you're contesting here in the choke. Your DPS are really forced to be here. They have to be very close to shoot the things that are at the choke because you're contesting enemy Reinhardt. Enemy Reinhardt is probably not going to push past here. So Junkrat, Hanzo, whatever you have back here is not going to get good shots. However, you back up a little bit. Contest enemy Reinhardt when he's here. And he's stuck in this choke. He's a... Your DPS are allowed to get, what's it called, way easier shots because, again, their Ryan is stuck in this super tight angle. You know, he's stuck, right, he's stuck here. He can't move past this without, without getting too aggressive, without a speed boost, without maybe a creative play from one of his teammates. He's stuck taking a ton of shield pressure, so you generally just want to back it up. Have your DPS back here, maybe you play here. Test Ryan at the choke, and that's kind of the same idea for every map. Which, I'll, again, I'm still going to go through all of them. So, his DPS, let's say he has a Hanzo back here. If you're playing all the way up, Hanzo could shoot from basically anywhere. But, if you're playing back here, Hanzo has to get into a less than ideal position. He's getting a little too close. Um, he has to get a little too close to break the shield, to pressure shield. And, of course, when your shield goes down, when your shield breaks, whatever, you're, you're much closer to cover over here. You could easily back around the clock tower. As opposed to if you're up here and your shield gets pressured, um, you get hooked or something, you can't quickly retreat to cover. Because there's no cover this way, it's super far. Uh, you can't go here, you're not going to go in here. But, play a little farther back, you have cover right behind you. So keep that in mind. Okay, next map. Alright, so here we have Dorado. The idea of this map is kind of a little different, but not, not too much. So this map, it's kind of, you poke a little bit from up here and then you drop back to your holding position. So on King's Row and Eichenwald, maps where where there's not like too much long range before the uh, before the cart gets to the choke, you don't really want to contest on those maps up close, you want to wait till they get to the choke, but this map there's a really long like narrow path here where your DPS can just get a bunch of full charge. Really folks are not getting picked here. Now, you're gonna be up here, you're gonna be you know, shields here, your team pokes as the cart's moving, so cart's moving, do, 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 do. all that's poking. So until the cart gets around here, you want to be up, up close, up top. Now once the cart gets to around this corner, you want to drop back, either through the bridge backwards, or all the way around, super safe, super safe. It just takes a few more seconds. It's up to you guys. But please, 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 this is a big mistake I see with people doing on maps like this. They drop in front of the choke. So when I say the choke, this is what I mean. This bridge right here is where the cart's forced to go, and it's a really tight, um, really tight area. So you don't want to be caught in there, because think think of what I've been saying these past two maps. You don't want to be in front of the choke. You don't want to be in the choke. So by you dropping in front over here, oh crap, excuse me. By you dropping in front here, anything that's in this area, which is literally the whole map for offense, well, not back here, but you get the point, okay? Anything in this area is able to shoot your shield because you dropped in front. Now think of it, you drop 10 feet back, that whole area is useless. That whole area can't shoot your shield. So your team has to rotate with you, again, either through the bridge or back around. And please, 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 it's way better to do it earlier than just, just to... A lot of people stay up there way too long, and they end up staying there until the cart's here, here. And they're like, oh, we'll drop back. And then they drop back. And the cart's already through the choke. And the enemy team has all the space. So, you want to drop back early. It's rather, it's earlier is the better, basically. Because you can get set up and hold them in the choke. As opposed to having, letting them have all this space. Alright, on to the next map. 
Alright, so seeing Junkertown, I, I thought of something I forgot to mention. This stuff doesn't really apply too much to Bastion comps. Um, and it won't either for the offensive part, so. Generally with Junkertown first point, the choke is here. The choke is this bridge and this this tight passage is the choke, okay? So again you want to position position around here. This way if you get pressured you can dip behind cover. But the enemy, if they get pressured, they have nowhere to go. They have the inside rooms which are very dangerous. Because your team can poke through around here and just shoot them. So that this room over here, not the best. Room over here, not too bad. But if you're playing up here, let me remove the drawing. If you're playing up here, enemies from freaking here, here, and even this area. So, enemies here are gonna shoot your shield. Enemies here are gonna shoot your shield. Not the best. Um, so, back it up a little bit. And then all this really gets reduced down to like this. This is the only stuff to be able to shoot your shield, basically. So you back it up, give them space, give them space, and then once it's around here, you can test. And they're stuck in this tight area. Again, this does not apply to Bastion comps. If you want me to make a video on uh, how to how to counter Bastion, because I know he's kind of a menace at lower ranks, um, I'm down to do that. But the big thing I can say about Bastion comps is it requires a little bit of like a team coordination. It honestly just revolves around poking a like minimal poking and then collapsing on the bastion. But if you want to meet if you want me to make a full video on that, I will. Anyway, we'll go to the next map. Alright, so another quick side note. Um, I'm using Rhine in these examples, but again, this does apply to Orissa. So generally where I've been showing Rhine in these examples is where you want to place your shields as Orissa. So, going to Rialto. Similar thing as Dorado. Kind of want to either be on the high ground up here. Okay, generally you want to be in this high ground, okay? Sometimes your team starts low ground, shit happens. Um, go high ground, do 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 do. Contest, contest, contest. Or I mean, uh, poke, poke, poke. Once they get space, you drop back. Now this map, it's, it's not uh, it's not as extreme. You don't have to go all the way back here. Because while the cart's basically around this spot, enemies are not going to get too aggressive if you drop here. I don't mean drop here. I mean, okay, so here, don't drop. You want to drop this way. Because it may not seem like a big difference, but that's a lot of space you got to walk back as Ryan. And then we might capitalize on that. So, drop back here. Contest, contest for a little bit. And then you back it up. And you have a ton of open space, free to move. You got cover over here if you need it. Your DPS up cover if they need it. Um, you're still able to shield much. And the enemies are forced to, to either be shield bots and forced to break shield, which you, if you have good shield management, will happen. Or they're forced to go for aggressive flanks, either through the high ground or down through the low ground. So, you want to play around here, test them when they're there, and you're right here, and he's stuck in the super narrow passage while your team has all this space to move around. And they're, they're stuck in hallways. Again, similar idea to every map. Next map. Okay, so Volskaya is a bit of an interesting one. So, again, you don't want to play in the choke, but let's we're going to go a little deeper than this. Then a little deeper than don't stand in this area. Okay, so a lot of people like to stand here-ish. And if you stand here and I'm on the enemy team, I'm going to punish this. And the reason why is on a on Volskaya attack, I always pick Mei, because a lot of people like to hold here. So you put a simple wall here, he's walled from his team, and you can kill him. But that's not the point of the video. Most people will hold here. And this is okay most of the time. In 95% of the situations, holding here is okay. Um, teams either force through here, in that little tight little area. And again, as they as they push, you back up a little bit. Leave them in that choke. Don't allow them to go in here, though. Don't allow them here. So you leave them in that choke. Again, keep backing up, keep backing up. Or they push through here, which... They could get high ground through here, which sucks. But until then, they're stuck in this open area where your team's easy, uh, easily able to shoot them in that area. So, what I like to do is, if I know the enemy team doesn't have many people that take advantage of high ground, so if I know they don't have like a, say a Hanzo Widow Soldier that's going to go to the top left area up here, I'll, I'll honestly drop back to point 
if they have a more brawly comp than us. Like if they're running something with, let's say goats. Let's say they're running goats. I like to give them space. Give them a ton of space, back it up, force them to take this whole half while my team uses our range for advantage, because I'm assuming we have a Hanzo Junkrat Soldier, something that takes advantage of range. And give them all this space so the enemy's forced to move all the way through here. This whole long pathway. Doing that gives your team an ability to shoot them, and their team is unable to brawl. So I back it up, hold them in this, this tight choke. This is what I do for Volskaya against Goats. Next map. Alright, so on Temple, generally you hold here. You hold, I, I, I call this area platform, some people call it bridge because there's a bridge right here. I call it platform. Um, well, you might see some really low rank tanks doing, he's going all the way up here. And again, this allows so many things to break shield from, from even behind the choke. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, oh my god, you're giving him so much space. Um, you know, you have a contestant choke, they're able to walk through. But, even though they're walking through, your team has high ground and their tanks aren't able to get up there easily. Assuming they're running a Ryan, a Ryan Um so what a lot of people end up doing is they'll push through here they'll take this long path and if they go through there you could test this choke right here this super super narrow passageway you're testing this from back here your people are able to break the shield from anywhere from here here blah, 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 blah. and his team has to be here basically this is the only area that can break your shield if you're playing from back here so, generally start here, poke, 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 and if the enemy comes through this side, all the way up this long passageway, then you rotate. But if they go through center, you guys keep breaking the shield, and then if, if you think they're going through the bridge, I mean under the bridge, if they're going that way, you guys could just stay here honestly, because you'll have enough poke damage from, from when they were here. You guys could hold high ground, you as Reinhardt can be the only one to contest, and your team can abuse the high ground. If they're going to push all the way top right around the point, so all the way back here, if they're going to come here, all the way up here. It's kind of a different story, kind of a, it's all, honestly a topic for a different video, because this doesn't really pertain to what I'm saying this video. If you want to see that video, let me know in the comments below. Next map. Alright, so here we have Blizzard World, and on Blizzard World, a lot of people like to hold up here. Because they think, oh, it's po it's it's like high ground, like Dorado. You just you, you poke from up here. But yeah, that could be true. But a lot of the time, what ends up happening is enemy will push around this way, and by the time you drop, they already get to the point, and you're just clashing on point, and you don't take advantage of the geometry that way. The way you take advantage of geometry is by holding over here, and by doing this, you kind of force the enemy team. Hold on. You force the enemy team to push into you, or they push all the way around, through the right side, like this, which is very uncommon, but if you do that, they're stuck in an even tighter choke this way, so that's why this is ill-advised. A lot of times they'll push left side. So you do that, play left side, poke while they're getting close, and then once they're actually close, you kind of kind of rotate back to point, hopefully you're... you're um, you have someone who can get to the high ground, maybe Ash, Hanzo, Junkrat. Someone who after they're poking, they get high ground quickly. Because if you have someone like McCree, he's not going to be able to contribute to shield break once you're all the way up here. If he's on low ground with you. Because generally McCree should be on the high ground. Excuse me, if he's on the high ground with you. If he's on the high ground and you're up here, McCree's not going to do much shield breaking. But, if you're playing back, or if you're playing up close and you have Junkrat, he can shield break from here. Do 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 do. He's shield breaking, shield breaking, shield breaking. And then once you rotate back, he rotates back to the high ground with the mine, and he's safe, and he's still able to do his job. Now, with someone like McCree, if he's on low ground, and he's shield breaking, shield breaking, shield breaking with you up here, he can't rotate as easily. He's going to be out of the fight, out of the fight for 5-10 seconds as he gets high ground. Which can be the difference between uh, one fight and a lost fight, honestly. So, next map we're going to look at, I think, Hollywood might be our last map. Alright, so final map we have here is Hollywood. And this wasn't the inspiration for the video, but I remember seeing this, uh, like a lower rank Reinhardt holding all the way up here. And I was like, man, what is the guy doing? That was kind of the whole thought that made me realize, yo, you gotta contest the choke, not play in the choke. It was on this map. They were playing all the way up here, allowing everyone on their team to shoot shield with, with uh, the blue team not able to shoot anything. So, as Ryan, you, you back up, 
Yeah, you hold here. No, let me get the wrong tool. You hold here. You say you have a DPS on high ground, they're able to shield break from back there. Whereas you hold up here, then your your soldier is forced to hold this high ground if he wants to shield break, and this is not the safest position for him. It's generally back here. Um, same with like your Ana. She's not able to heal you from back here, but she is from up here. And again, you don't want to hold it. you don't want your DPS up here. You want them back here. Take advantage of their long range, you know what I mean? So, you back up. And we Ryan's stuck in the choke now. His team back here can't break the shield. He has to get up here to break shield. Change the position, they'll take chip damage, the Ryan shield gets melted, and you should win. So, that kind of concludes the defense part. Generally, same idea. Don't put yourself in the choke, put yourself a little bit behind the choke. This way you can test in, you cast the Reinhardt at the point when he's in the choke, not you. So that's for the defense part. Next we're going to move on to offense where the biggest issue is the, it's you always hear it, you always hear people saying press W, press W, press W, and it's such an issue. People always, always, always play super passive in lower ranks as tanks, and people always assume their DPS are bad, but a lot of time it's because the, your tanks are bad. Your tanks are not creating space effectively. So we're just going to assume you're running a a similar Ryan Zarya type comp with, let's just say, a Hanzo on your team, okay? This doesn't, it's not really too important to a flanker. Um, so you might be stuck here as a Ryan. And your Hanzo's, he, he can't really get a, a really good shot from here, you know? Like there's going to be a shield here. So anything that's on the, on the low ground is not, not easily shootable. He's going to be stuck shield breaking. And if there's someone on the high ground behind, all the way back here, let's make an enemy. This is often too far a shot for your Hanzo to hit. Because of travel time, enemy's going to be moving unpredictably. And Hanzo won't be able to hit the shot if this person has good movement. So what you have to do is you, you're going to have to push through. Because like I was talking about in defense, if, um, if a round's going to push you and take space, most rounds will back up. Lower ranks, they're going to back up. They're going to give the space. So you're able to push through. And now instead of your Hanzo being stuck back here, basically trying to trying to get a lucky shot to someone in the high ground, he's able to push forward. You take the space, boo boo. He's able to either excuse me. He's able to either climb up here and get better shots from here into the back line. Or he's able to get even closer to this soldier and get much better shots on him. So I'm not gonna go through every map like I did with offense, or like excuse me, like I did with defense. But the same thing kind of pertains to every map. You want to get yourself through the choke because your DPS are not going to be able to do anything from back here. And you could see how the offense and defense kind of relate, right? All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, any feedback, I would love to hear it in the comment section below. Um, if you want to see more of me, feel free to check the description for my Twitch as well as my Discord. Um, I do coaching, vibe reviews, whatever you want. So feel free to hit me up if you really want to improve in Overwatch.